All right, guys. Sorry about this wind. So I'm trying to get get over here a little bit, but I'm trying to get busy here here in an hour or so. But I guess uh, there's like a severe thunderstorm warning, so it's been uh, kind of like cruising this way. So hopefully it's a like quarter size hail and 60 mile an hour wind. So it looks. I think there's a system over there and then one over here. So hopefully it'll pass by and we can get some work done tonight. All right, that's all. All right, so my lights are warming up. Thunderstorms are passing by. Hopefully, <laughs> it's not gonna get zapped. I don't really worry about the rain or anything. It's freaking lightning. It like, and I'm like get busy too, so it like creeps up on me out here. But anyhow, so uh, I'm gonna get busy on the inside, and then uh, cause I want to crank up my shop vac and get um, get this vacuum before it gets too late. I don't want to be making like way too much noise. And then we'll talk about some stuff, what I figured out with the engine and some other stuff. So that's really it. I'm probably gonna piece the video I did it like yesterday or the day before into here. I uh, did a compression test and stuff like that. So anyways, I'm gonna get on this real quick and then uh, we'll go over it, we'll talk about it and uh, hoping to get some feedback from you guys and some stuff. Yeah, let's get into it. See if we can catch one more though. I have my headphones in so it like crap up on me. I heard like this big bang and I was like, oh, I better freaking check it out. Whoa. All right, so in here, I've been working on it, and uh, it was just really dirty. Even the doors were just like filthy. I scrubbed them twice with that Grand Slam, and that stuff's like really heavy duty to greaser. I ended up having to go over them like two times because, like, even like after I would do my initial wipe, I'd wipe it again, and the rag would just be like super nasty. These are pretty much all the rags that I've gone through so far, and they are all like pretty filthy. So <laughs> we'll get some dirt out of this mug. So like I said, some of it was actually just like dirt and some of it was just like filth, like it's filthy, you know, look at that. You know, I want to make sure that you when know, I'm driving, I don't feel like, you know, I don't feel like I'm freaking needing gloves and stuff. So, so next up, I'm going to probably just going to end up finishing up with the dash. I'm letting this soak down here. If you remember earlier in the video, it was a big spot and it like ran down the side here and so it's taken most of that up there's a big area there i just been letting it soak so i've scrubbed it like two times really good now and like you know i soaked it scrubbed it wiped it up soaked it scrubbed it wiped it up so now it's soaking the third time and uh, i'm gonna just hit it some more while i'm working on everything else you can see it's still kind of dirty so when i'm all done i'll just spray it one more time and then i'll get it with some rags and uh call it good enough i mean i don't, it don't have to look like pretty you know what i mean i just wanted to clean it um, you know, I cleaned the carpet back here and the stuff up there. I mean, it's got like tape marks on it, so I'll have to hit it up with something. I can, I mean, I can spray the Grand Slam. It will probably take that off, but I still have to address this, this back wall and window and stuff like that. So the seats probably aren't going to go back in here, um, until I do that. That way, you know, I can vacuum up the, you know, the glass and stuff that's going to fall out of there and I'm going to have to clean up the, uh, the, uh, silicone and stuff. So anyways, yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's move on to the dash, get the steering wheel cleaned up. I'll talk a little bit about how I clean these. Um, these are, and uh, I really learned this basically from watching Darren from Auto Fetish Detail. You can't, you really can't wipe these with anything. You, if you wipe them with a microfiber, if you wipe them with whatever you decide to wipe it with, 
it's gonna really scratch it um, you may not see it that much but there's some fine scratches so the thing that I think somebody wrote into Darren and told him this but the um, what I use and let me see if I got it in here uh oh where's that oh here it is is this you can buy this stuff at like Walmart it's called quick interior detailer so you spray this on your blue window rag and I don't know exactly what you call this rag but I just use it on my windows and stuff so you, sp you spray it on here and get this wet and then you wipe it and then you turn it over and then you wipe it again wipe it dry kind of just buff it but slightly just a little bit and it seems to do the trick for me you could even like if you're sweating it just get it wet wipe it and then let it dry and see how it looks but that's the thing that I found for me like cleaning those and cleaning like the faces of like backup cameras like in my um, my Suburban and like my Tahoe LTZ and stuff like that that's what I used and it came out really good when I was doing my detailing for a while you know sometimes you'd bump those with the, <laughs> with the freaking rag and you'd leave a scratch and you'd be like oh my god but that's what I use and uh, it's worked well so anyways let me clean up this dash we'll call it a night and I'll talk about a little bit of what's going on I think with the engine and talk about some parts that showed up All right, guys. Well, it ain't perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better. At least all the uh, all the stinks off of it. You know what I mean? All the nastiness. And, you know, I mean, it's still still got some dirt and down like down in these areas, but you know what I mean? It's like it's cleanish. It had a whole bunch of stuff. It had some paint right there. We did a pretty good job getting most of that off. There's just some like little specks, but not that big white paint deal, which I mean, it wouldn't have really bothered me anyways, but. It's off of there now, you know what I mean? Just took a little elbow grease and uh, so cleaned up the back, cleaned up some stuff. You know how it has like that nasty old buildup on here. I got the steering wheel cleaned and uh, we cleaned the cluster face. So, like I said, I use that Meguiar's quick interior detailer. I, you know, I get the, I fold the rag into fours and I spray the whole rag and I wipe it. And if there's something stuck like that, I don't just sit there and like, I just wipe it nice and gently. I wipe all around the trim. It does a really good job getting all that stuff off. It's good on glass, like review mirrors and backup ca camera monitors and stuff like that. Navigation screens and it, look at that. I mean, you know, you tell me. I mean, if you would have hit that with some kind of like rag or other cleaner, it would probably scratch it. But like I said, I don't get serious on it. I just wet it down. I probably wiped it three or four times with, you know, a fresh side of the towel. And that's it. I mean, if there's something stuck on there, then, you know, we'll, maybe we'll have luck getting it next time or something. But that's how I do it. Um, yeah. So, let's see, we'll walk around and check out the other door. So, here's this door. And then uh, we'll move it in the garage. We'll talk about some parts. I'll talk about what's going on with the engine of this. And uh, talk about what we got coming up in the next few days. All right, let me show you a couple parts that came in today. These are some propane mounts, and this is for the sway bar because uh, <laughs> the, the link bushings are just, they're not even there. I don't, they may be like ones there, but the rest of them are just, how the hell is this thing open? Anyway, one of them is just busted to hell here. Now hold on, let me open this stupid thing. Anyway, this kit was pretty inexpensive. I think it was something like 30 bucks, but it comes with new hardware, the end links, and the bar bushings, and some grease, and probably a sticker or something. Does it have a sticker in here or something? I don't know. What does it say? Uh, oh, parts list. Anyways, I thought that was a pretty good deal. Instead of just the bushings, you get all the hardware, because uh, it is bad. Um, another thing up front, and maybe you guys can chime, one of you guys can chime in on this. Um, it's missing one of the torsion arm bolts that it turns the key or whatever it's called and the other one's barely hanging on the truck in the front is basically smashing the bump stop so it's definitely going to need to be adjusted uh, ordered me a filter so i wouldn't have to pay for for freight 
And then we got this bad boy. Now, I talked with True Dead Man. He told me that the reason that these flex plates break is that the torque converter balloons and it causes it to break. So he said that he recommends replacing the torque converter, which I ain't got no money right now, so I'm not going to, but I am in the future, I'm going to. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get this truck ready just for this one trip there and back. And then I will, you know, start putting money away. I mean, I still got, I still got to build this thing and do this, but you know, we'll slowly, you know, I want to get it on the road first and then go from there. Now I got this from Summit. It's a, an ATP deal. Yeah, let's see if the part number's on the side somewhere. But the cool thing about this, yeah, it's a Z-270. Made in China. All right, well, you know, all right. Can all be winners. But anyways, this was like 40 bucks, all right? And the cool thing about this is that this is made for the LS engines that hooks to a 4L80 or a Turbo 400. And it has, it has the adapter spacer to connect it to the old school 400 um, or the old style um, that has the short stub. So like I did on the, was, or how I did this transmission over here, I had to use the spacer and then the LS flywheel. So then, or flex plate, excuse me. So this is the flex plate you need. It comes with new hardware. And, uh, 10 9 hard, I don't know how much, how good 10 9 Chinese hardware is. Um, but it does have the spacer there. So, yeah. So, anyways, um, for, for that price, and I've said, I mean, the spacer alone is like 30 bucks by itself. So, I didn't know about this flywheel, but I mean, I, I didn't need it anyways because I don't have a six bolt converter on my 400. But, anyways, I figured I'd point that out to you guys if you're doing a swap. So, hopefully, uh, you know, this sucker will hold me over for a trip. I hope. So if I can get there and back, we'd be good to go. All right. Now, when we finished the last video, all right? I don't know why I'm showing you that. When we finished the last video, what I really figured out, I, I put it all back together. I put it back together with LS1 coils. I did a compression test. I uh, kicked it over four times. ba do ba do ba do ba do They all read... Um, anywhere between, I think, anywhere between like 170 and 200. So 170 and 190, 200 area. So I think they're all good. Nothing was low. I mean, I cranked them all the same. They all had pretty same numbers. So I'm pretty sure we're good there. Um, so really, I've eliminated everything except for like maybe like a, a bad injector or um, like a wiring issue. So I'm going to have Joe come by. When it's all, when I, when after I fix everything, or after I put this on, because I don't know, like this thing's making noise, the broken one. So it could be like making the knock sensors go wacky. I don't know. Um, also, you know, it's almost like an imbalanced drive shaft, you know, with this thing spinning and it's cracked, you know, maybe it's just doing, giving a little shake, you know what I mean? So it could be that too. So am I disappointed that I, you know, wasted a weekend tearing stuff apart? No, because I wanted to know, you know what I mean? So I'm not, you know, I'm not disappointed in the least tearing that stuff apart and I don't feel bad because now I know it's I mean it's a good engine inside nothing's really worn and uh, everything looks good so it's better to know than not to know so anyways so that's where we're at um, I also found on the back of each exhaust manifold there's one broken bolt so one above eight one above seven and I'm gonna have to extract those so probably have to pull the manifold um, put a, a nut on there weld it get them off something like that we will see. Now, I did see something cool too. So if you guys are in that situation, and I see they had good reviews, but on Amazon they actually had a they made a clamp. So one is actually for the front of one head and the back of the other, and then there's another clamp for vice. You know what I mean? It goes on the other side, so it's a different part number. But it'll actually like bolt into the head, and it just clamps it down instead of you having to fix it. So instead of it leaking, it'll just actually just push it up against the head. So if you guys ever like are in that situation and got to go that route, I don't know. Apparently it's a big deal. These stupid things cracking. So I'm just going to get some better hardware and, uh, and fix it up. So, but I, like I'm saying, there's no lean codes or anything. So I'm not really sweating the leak right now. I'm just going to fix this and then see how it runs. Cause 
Um, apparently it's pretty common and like I said if I ain't got no lean codes or anything else like that I mean I'm not really gonna sweat it right now but I am gonna fix it before I go to Moab so probably here in the next three or four weeks we got to get in there and fix that but until then I think we can figure out what's going on with our engine and uh, stuff like that so that's all guys I'm gonna go in I appreciate you guys rolling with me thank you for uh, you know giving me information and uh, and all that good stuff hey and one more thing guys um, I've got to make ramps for the back. I did some measurements. I'm going to do seven foot ramps. Now I've got, um, I would let you see me, but I'm all like sweaty and nasty. But anyways, I'm going to do seven foot ramps. Okay. And I've, I can obviously, I can make them out of angle. So either like two by three angle on the sides or two by two angle, like quarter inch angle and, uh, you know, brace them, you know, do my crossbars and brace them. Or I've seen a video of this guy today and his was pretty cool, but he did like, it was like, um, I think it was like three by one. Yeah. It was like three by one, like square stock and he put them side by side. And then he put like a piece of three sixteenths, like, I don't know, like, like almost all the way to each end and welded that in. So it didn't like gave it a lot more like, you know, top load rigidity. Anyway, so if you got uh, suggestions for me about how to do my ramps or if you've done them and have some pictures or something, send them over. Let me know. I would appreciate it. All right, guys. Have a good night. I'm going in. Bye.